Hello, it's March 2022, and I'm briefly going to talk about something that I know is going to trigger many people, especially people who call themselves freedom fighters or perhaps even truthers. And before anyone jumps to any conclusions about my motive or my objective with this video, please watch it through to the end because I'm trying to highlight, I'm actually going to be highlighting two points here. And I'm going to be focusing on the pastor that's in Alberta, Canada, who's now in jail for uh, going against restrictions and things that were being imposed on the people for the past two years. Now, I want to stop right here and I want to just be very clear. I'm not stating or implying I agree with anything that has been imposed over the past two years anywhere in the world. And nor am I stating or implying that I agree with what is happening to this particular pastor. Okay, I'm not. But I just want to make, again, a few points here. So what if I told you that this pastor is in his situation right now because of his own ego, perhaps his own delusion? Now, the delusion part is going to come with him being a pastor, talking about scripture, and self-fulfilling what he would perceive, the prophecy, the book of Revelations, being persecuted. His ego is the fact that he decided to showcase his defiance on everything that's being imposed. And again, I'm not stating or implying I agree with what was being imposed, because now everything is proof pretty much lifted. So I'm going to focus right now real quick on his ego. What was more important to him with his efforts? Was it to showcase and proclaim his, as a Christian would say, their faith? Or was his importance with getting the message of Scripture the gospel, as Christians would say, getting that message out. Now I'm going to use real quick an analogy, no pun intended. Now you look, say for example, during a world war, and say there's restrictions and stuff on who receives medical treatment, because during a war, supply chains are cut off, and whatever. Now, and we have, we have observed this, in previous world wars where people went underground and helped people gave them medicine or medical treatment whatever that was needed but they did it underground quietly out of the public limelight because they knew if they went public then there would be problems their efforts would cease now, when you look at this pastor, he decided to showcase. And his efforts had put him in a situation now that, for example, he's in jail. What good is his efforts, for example, as Christians would say, spreading the gospel when he's in no position to do so? We see or hear of, anyway, stories. Again, they're just stories throughout history going back to ancient times, can we verify it? Who knows? But that's not the point of these martyr types. Ah, martyr. Kind of a delusion there. Now there's someone who's a real martyr who ends up trying to avoid being one at all costs, but ends up being one to those people who even, as I said, in alleged historical accounts, meaning we can't verify anything in history beyond even the past 50, 60 years, who march forward and, you know, have this, I don't know what you want to call it, delusion of who they are and their efforts and how things are going to play out, which is ego, delusion. Contrasting that again with people who try to avoid at all costs to become one. 
So we have this pastor now in jail, and people are screaming and ranting about about him. And trust me, for someone that was incarcerated for my efforts in speaking the truth and whistleblowing and exposing, I know what that's like. So, and it's not a picnic. So I do feel for the guy. But again, why is he there? He could have, again, using Christian terminology, preaching the gospel, keeping the faith, and trying to avoid it all instead of showcasing it. Now, over the years, there were some people who, as a descriptive I'm going to use, who acted free, lived their life as it was prior to when all this nonsense began a few years ago. They did so quietly. They went into places, kept their nose to the ground, did what they had to do, left, made no stink. Even when, for example, other people, busybodies, social justice warrior types, virtual signaling, try to impose on them a little bit. And these people just ignore those, went about their business. Avoided situations where that potential for something to happen would have been higher. That's being smart. So... During this time, there was also many people who had to showcase, had to proclaim publicly their position, causing rifts and problems. These people ended up suffering consequences and wore that as a badge of honor rather than surviving the day going unscathed. They felt it was more important. Again, eagle, perhaps even some delusion there. Many people had legal problems and still do, just like this pastor. And again, going through the unnecessary hardship, they didn't try to avoid it at all costs. And people are suffering. Again, because of ego, perhaps some sort of delusion. Now, with what's happening, going back to the pastor and other people, who did the same as the pastor. Now they're dealing with police, judicial, and political corruption on many levels. And people are irate. So here is somebody who caused their own problems rather than trying to avoid it. And people are noticing that. But there are people out there and again, I'm not the only one. There's plenty of people just like me, unheard of, who try to avoid problems at all costs. In the end, couldn't for their efforts. Now people are saying, well, this pastor, there's this injustice. We can't accept this. And I've said for many, many, many years, the bigger injustices that we see are based on the countless of unheard of injustices that happen every day. No one cares. You really have to think about why, in this case, for example, this pastor's case is everyone's paying attention to one because the media went with it. And it's a nice little distraction get people to kind of focus on something else, perhaps. So I'm trying to offer a few things here to think about. Who are people paying attention to and who they're not paying attention to? And when it comes to police, judicial, political corruption, people want to now challenge that. Now, I guarantee you, and I know there are people in the legal profession, like lawyers, who are watching this. I guarantee no lawyer is going to jeopardize their future, their career, their bread and butter, to 
expose or change anything because they have everything to lose. However, there are people who have nothing to lose but do have working knowledge of the system. Again, they go unheard of because they're nobodies. They don't have a title and they're not promoted by mainstream media nor are they promoted by alternative media. So, police, judicial, political corruption with regards to this pastor. What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? What experience do you have dealing with this kind of stuff? Working knowledge of law? Anyway, I'm not trying to take anything away from this pastor. I'm just trying to put everything into perspective for everyone. Anyway, that's all I really want to say. All respect to the pastor. And I do respect the people who call themselves freedom fighters. I've done videos on this. Again, not very well received by them, but whatever. And I do respect the truthers because they're trying to make some sort of effort. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me all the time, when is it going to get easier? When do you die?